Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome everyone, regular rollers time. We're gonna get started right after I mentioned that this week's list is brought to you by Greg Morris Cards. More on them coming up in just a bit. First one is sent by Mike who wrote, I spotted this with about 20 minutes left in the auction and had a near knee-jerk reaction to place a bid thinking this was gonna be a steal. A one of one card with Larry Bird. Anyway, I stopped and did a quick search and apparently the one of one means that the set is numbered to one and it's not a print run number in any way. Pretty confusing for a collector and possibly for the seller since they're advertising it in the title as a one of one card. Yeah, that's interesting. 2001 Fleer exclusives, Team Fleer of Vince Carter and Larry Bird. And uh, you can see there on the back, the card is, is, is numbered one of one. You know, in 2001, you know, one of ones weren't really a thing yet in the hobby. So uh, some sets would still do this. They'd number their cards one of one or, you know, three of eight or whatever. So here it is one of one. That's not a serial number in any way. There's many copies of this card available in existence but yeah that's a uh, guy's confusing and, and the seller here i mean they put one on one in the title that's technically true I, you know i would i would say it's obviously misleading and i would recommend that they do something to clarify that but yeah this was in by peter who wrote here's when i was disappointed to lose the listing is for over 200 cards mostly from 1958 to 1960 there were zero bidders until the last few seconds but probably because of the vague listing title with poor photos the best cards were shown in the fourth photo, which was upside down, and there was no way to determine condition from the photos. The backs of these cards could have glue all over them. Additionally, the uh, bid floor was $199, which was a bit risky considering the quality of photo. I decided to take a risk and bid $256 at the last second, but of course I got sniped. Now I'll never know whether this would have been a complete bust or my best eBay purchase ever. Yeah, this is one I definitely would have taken a gamble on at this price or, or even a good bit higher as uh, it, it looks very promising. The, the, you know, the listing itself, like you said, is very poorly laid out. Vintage baseball cards lot is the title. That's not gonna catch very many eyeballs. That's not gonna pick up a lot of search terms that, that you need. And the first three photos, like you said, are all comms. The fourth photo is really where you get all the stars and it's upside down, really hard to see. But I count four mantles um, from 58, 59. There's a 59 Clemente, like you mentioned. There's, a, uh, there's just a bunch of stars here. There's a 59 Willie Mays All-Star. You got Al Kaline, Whitey Ford, just a bunch of Ernie Banks, bunch of major stars here. Now, it's still a gamble. A, a lot like this is always going to be a gamble. Uh, I mean, like you said, these could all be run over by a truck division, heavy creasing that the pictures don't you know, show, or major back damage throughout. But I would say that this is still a calculated, you know, a, a worthwhile calculated gamble as there's, uh, assuming the cards are not all just really, really low conditions. You know, the four mantles are probably going to get you pretty close to the price regardless. So, yeah, this was... Uh, Whoever, whoever ended up getting this got a, a nice, uh, probably got a nice deal here. This was sent by Jacob Road. I wanted to share this eBay purchase. Uh, it is a lot of 47 Mike Trout cards. I won the auction as the sole bidder for just $30. It was listed as a starter lot for a new collection, so it went a bit under the radar. However, what caught my eye was the 2012 Topps Heritage Mike Trout card, which sells for $50 to $60 alone. Additionally, there are many cards from his early playing days at 2012 Topps Base, 2012 Topps Chrome, 2012 Topps Update, and 2013 Topps Rookie, up, uh, Rookie Cup Chrome, not to mention that all the other cards will bring $1 to $5 a piece. As a Mike Trout fan and collector, I'm super stoked about this. I'll probably sell off the lower-end cards to pay for the lot and keep the nicer cards for my personal collection. Yeah, congratulations on that. Definitely got a bargain here, and, and good job sort of you know going through the pictures and identifying some some nicer cards that weren't highlighted well. Yeah, the 2012 Topps Heritage, like you said, that's really the key card in the lot. That's on the left side here, about halfway down with sort of the, the green at the bottom. That's his first Topps Heritage card. Yeah, maybe a $50 card like you mentioned, and uh, re really well done. Congrats on that. Next one is sent by Kirk, wrote, I'm mainly a collector of football cards, but I started branching out into other sports uh, about a year ago. I ran across this 1951 Topps ringside Rocky Marciano, and I'm a bit confused by the grade. It's slabbed in a PSA Fair 1.5, but the front of the card looks incredibly sharp in almost every aspect. Clearly, the back has a big stain or imprint issue, which I'm assuming is what led to the 1.5 grade. But does something like that really drive the grade down this much? The asking price for 1.5 seems high, but I was just caught off guard when I saw how sharp the card looked. I uh, would love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, so, you know, technically, yeah, 1.5 is probably the right grade. When something has a stain or, you know, back damage of, of this note, uh, I believe the highest it can possibly get is a 2, but it might actually be a 1.5. So, yeah, if I were to grade this card, I would, I would expect a 1.5. But this is a good example of where, you know, really, really strong eye appeal comes into play. Because, yeah, take a look at the front of this card, which is much, you know, more important to most collectors is the front than the back. The front of this card looks absolutely, you know, gorgeous for a, a 1.5.
Next one is sent in by Ron, who wrote, I just bought this 2022 Leaf Dominique Wilkins auto. First, the title of the listing was pretty bad, Dominique Wilkins 2022-23 Leaf auto. And also, the card is numbered to only 75, which is nowhere in the listing but can be read on the card. It's not stamped, it just has 75 copies. I get that it's a 2022 card, and I get that it's Leaf with no license for the team logos, but it's still a Hall of Famer, my favorite all-time basketball player, and a limited print run, and, and I got it all in for just $6.31. I don't have a Wilkins auto, and as you would say, I consider that a good way to spend six dollars yeah i mean totally agree everything you said here you got a, a hall of famer auto the human highlight film you know all in for six dollars and 31 cents certainly nothing wrong with that this one was sent in by a guy who wrote, this is a chamberlain rookie a, rookie a psa 9 mp which stands for movie prop i guess it's also the 113th card psa ever graded but have you ever seen the movie prop thing uh, I don't know what to make of this. This uh, well, this is not a legit PSA holder. Uh, the the holder is a, a fake of some kind, and the card itself is definitely a fake. Front doesn't quite look right, but on the back, especially the, the colors are just completely off. But yeah, I, movie prop is what it's listed in the title. It's like it considered a movie prop. Maybe this was used in a show or something to represent a Wilt Chamberlain rookie. I, I don't know. There's a, some weird authenticity sticker on the back. Or two of them, those circular stickers at the top. I don't, I don't recognize any of this stuff, so I really don't know what to make of this card. It went for four hundred and five dollars, which is, you know, if this was a legit Will Chamberlain rookie, that would be insanely low. As this would be a five-figure, maybe even a six-figure card. But um, given that it's a movie prop, I mean, I would have thought this is essentially a worthless item. So I don't, I don't really know what to make of this. Uh, it does come with the authenticity guarantee program through eBay, so I don't know what they're gonna do there. Next up is a 1972 Topps in action Roger Staubach, Captain Comeback, graded A, PSA, Near Mint 7. And this is a really nice alternative rookie. Staubach's rookie is in the 1972 Topps set, but he's also in the set a couple other times uh, with this in action and a couple, a couple league leaders maybe. This card went for just $25, which is basically market value. And Staubach's standard rookie in a 7 would cost you, you know, many hundreds of dollars. So really nice alternative here, rookie year card and nice grade for a, a fraction of the price. I was the seller, and I sold it through Greg Morris Cards, who, as I mentioned, is sponsoring this episode. They're one of the premier sellers of sports cards on eBay, with their bread and butter being raw vintage, but they have a huge selection of graded and, and modern as well. They have a YouTube channel loaded with great historical videos about sports cards. A recent one is on the 1990 score Bo Jackson football baseball card, one of the most famous cards from the Junk Wax era. I recommend you check them out, both their store and YouTube channel. I've included links to both in the description below. This was sent in by Brian, and I found this listing because it had Jordan in the title, but I cannot find a single Michael Jordan card in the photos. The one Bulls card I see is a 97 Collector's Choice Scottie Pippen, worth about a dollar, and the Mickey Mantle in the photo seems to be a modern card or a reprint. Despite this, the auction reached $142 plus another $20 to ship, so the buyer is all in for around $175, which uh, seems like quite the gamble because nothing jumps out at me in the photos as being worth much. Curious your thoughts on this lot from the buying perspective as well as the selling. The buyer has uh, since left uh, positive feedback saying all very positive, so I guess he wasn't upset with the results, but it sure seems like an overpayment to me. So I looked over this pretty closely. There is actually a Jordan. I did find a Jordan card. It's hidden way down there at lower right corner of this photo here, but uh yeah i mean i don't i certainly don't see anything the seller did wrong you know 1200 plus cards auto with auto relic jordan mantle aaron i mean that's all correct 1200 card i assume there's 1200 plus cards there's some relics definitely some autos in there there was a jordan i mean yeah the mantles are certainly modern but most mantle cards are modern nowadays same with hank aaron's i, I don't see anything the seller did wrong and the buyer here at this price i mean you know yeah, there's there's no real big money cards for sure. It looks like most of the stuff is quarter cards, dime cards, nickel cards, 50 cents up to a dollar maybe, maybe a couple, you know, $2 type cards. But so you're not going to be breaking the bank. But if you're buying this as a collector, I think that's a lot of bang for your buck. That's a lot of fun to play with that many notable cards. It's got some vintage. You got a mix of everything. And if you're buying it for breakup value, I don't, I don't know that you're going to do very well. You might be able to, might be able to squeeze out a small profit, but Regardless, that yeah, I don't really see anything wrong in either direction here. This was sent in by Kurt, who wrote, I'm writing to flag what appears to be a completed sale of a 1989 score Deion Sanders in raw condition, but it's being marketed as a PSA 10. Sold for $111 with 17 bids. The seller has no feedback and one other active listing, a 96 tops Kobe rookie, also raw, also sta uh, stating PSA 10. I'll flag it to eBay, but just awful stuff out there. 
yeah, this listing is clearly misleading. You know, no raw card should ever be have PSA in the title or, or PSA 10 in the title. Even if you think it's PSA worthy, that, that's misleading. This card has nothing to do with PSA at this at this moment in time. So having PSA 10 gem mint is obviously not not acceptable in my view. Now, you know, part of it's on the buyer too. Like you gotta you gotta do a little bit of due diligence here. This card's clearly not a PSA 10. Uh, $111. I mean, this is basically a $10 card raw. So, you know, the buyer needs to do a little bit of homework here, but really this is on the seller and should not be allowed. Now, this is below the eBay Authenticity Guarantee Program level, so it won't go there. But a buyer is always allowed to return a card once they receive it if they're not happy with it, and I hope the buyer does so in this case. This was done by Elliot, who wrote, Every now and then I'll browse eBay lots for hidden gems, and finally I hit something decent. I bought this lot the other day. The seller originally had it posted buy it now for 200 and I was able to get them down to 90 I noticed there were two 2002 private stock titanium Tom Brady cards. However, one appeared to be the red parallel. Those are numbered out of 275 but the listing had no pictures of the card backs. Anyway, the cards arrived today, and I was right. The red parallels go for at least $100, but I think I'll hold it for now. There was also a high-capacity insert from the same set included, which is another nice uh, card for Brady collectors. Just wanted to share my success. And congrats on that. I mean, that was basically, I would call that a calculated gamble, and, uh, you know, well done. Here's another lot. A lot of lots this week is, uh, they, they can be fun. This was ended by Joseph, who wrote, check out this score. I got multiple Hall of Fame-worthy rookies here and a sick museum collection a Genevian Clowney rookie four-piece patch. Just one of those situations where a seller did a bad job listing the items and overshot his shipping costs, which can deter buyers. I've always been a, a Clowney fan since the fateful day he made that amazing play in college at South Carolina. And if you Google his name to this day, 10 years later, it's the first thing that pops up. Besides the Clowney, there was a Topps Chrome Aaron Donald rookie, a Mike Evans rookie from Topps Supreme uh, out of 149, a Bowman Chrome Darrell Rivas rookie, a Big Ben out of 99 from Inception, plus more. Yeah, congratulations once again in order. It looks like you're about $10 all in here. The Aaron Donald is probably a $10 card alone, uh, as is the Clowney, as would be the Russell Wilson Topps rookie. Uh, obviously did very well here. And we'll finish on a vintage bargain. This was sent by Aaron, who wrote, Got this 1957 Topps Earl Lloyd card via best offer. Opened with an offer of $60, and after some back and forth, got it for $70 all in. In good condition, this card can uh, easily reach four figures and is still, in my opinion, very undervalued in the hobby as a whole. For a quick history lesson, Earl Lloyd was the first African-American player to play in the NBA. He beat two other players by a day, uh, who all debuted in the 1950 season because he had uh, the first scheduled game. But although he debuted for the Washington Capitals, he then played the next seven seasons for the Syracuse Nationals, and his rookie card is considered the, the 1957 Topps card for the Nats. As a Syracuse, New York resident, I've enjoyed learning the history of the game in my city, while building some vintage sets and was excited to see an affordable version of this card come up as my budget is light these days with uh, two kids under three. Very cool card, of course, and, uh, you know, it was always interesting to me how Jackie Robinson is, is so celebrated, as of course he should be, by Major League Baseball. You know, there's the Jackie Robinson Award and there's Jackie Robinson Day, and it's such a household name. Uh, whereas in the other sports, you know, the, the players to cross the color barrier aren't, aren't really well known, at least by the masses. I would imagine the, the vast majority of people have never heard of Earl Lloyd here, who was the first player to cross the color barrier in uh, the NBA. But that's it for this week's regular rollers. Thank you, everyone, for all the great submissions. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And I have been getting some more that some of you are not eating your vegetables. A little disappointed to hear that. So let's uh, get that back on track. Thanks, everyone.